Welcome back to PJ Chen Design Channel. Many people have asked me how I do my rendering. So today I would like to show you a step-by-step -step basic jury cat rendering with Keisha in this mini series. We are going to turn in Rhino file into this Keisha rendering. Are you ready? Let's get started. First of all, you can go to Keyshot.com to download Keyshot for the trial. Um, Keyshot has been mainly using in a lot of the industry. In their website, there are a lot of examples for showing uh, different brands and artists are using the Keyshot rendering. I will highly recommend you looking into those rendering and see if that fitting into uh, your design. For me, I've been using a Keyshot ever since i using Rhino. So this is the uh, software I will highly recommend. It. It's really easy to use and there's a lot of a good feature that you can look into it. Keisha also has their own YouTube channel so you are more than welcome to checking in. There's a lot of a video for all industry. For download my tutorial uh, demo file you can sign up this uh, newsletter and um, after you sign it up put your name and email address and then you will get the link to download this file before we get into the key shot i would like to talk about some basic idea for the rendering any model that you have doesn't matter what unit you have right now you will need to do some preparation before you getting into the key shot first you have your model and the idea is you're going to have a backdrop or something like that. As you can see the render view, if we render in a certain angle, you kind of see the background has a gradation. Sometimes we don't have this backdrop, we just have a big plane that will work as well. After that, another element is camera. You will have the camera and this is uh, just an idea for what that is my camera is actually the one that I'm rotating but you have a camera facing your object and then you were shooting the whole thing inside the environment now I'm using the sphere to represent the entire environment that could be your studio or any of the environment that you have a lighting setup or something like that I'm just gonna temporarily turn it off and sometimes you might need to individual light for example I using this this uh, yellow panel to represent the individual light and this lighting could be uh, changing the angle changing the direction and moving around to shooting on a certain area you want to highlight or something like that now that's talking about the material and preparation before we getting into the key shot everything in this model they all in the same layer I'm going to create a layers called material and I'm going to separate them in different layer. The rule for separate them is by the different material. So for example, I'm going to create some sub layer. And each layer, I'm going to name it different material. For example, the ring shank, I'm going to put it into this one and call it shank. And I can change the color if I want to. The color is not related to the uh, material color. It's just easy to tell what that is. This is going to be the head. So I'm going to change the layer and call it head here. And the stone, I'm going to put it into the same layer and it's going to change that layer and it's called stone. If your size stone, it's going to be different color. For example, on the top, I might want to have the sapphire and on the side, those are side stone, I might want to have diamond. So I'm going to put it into a different layer and it's called side stone. And very last one, I have this one. This is the prong that I have and I'm going to give it another layer here and change the color, um, change the names called prong and I'm also going to save it as a different color. All right, so now our file is ready for the key shot. And additional thing, if you do like to change them, the position, for example, if you like them to lie down, you probably wanna do it right now and make sure that they can snapping into the floor 
correctly something like this and make sure that they align nicely so in this case i have this one i may want to rotate it using this as a pivot point and bring it down something like that all right so now my file is ready and this is the file we are going to do the rendering once you are ready you want to save it as a different file because i will because if later on you need to change anything you do not want the, the model is already being rotated it will be hard for you to change the stone size and you want everything still maintain it is stand up position so any of the rendering you want you want it to be separate file okay so now we have it ready after you install your keysha you should have uh, the keysha plugin right here what you can do is just click on the first one and it will automatically bring it to the key shot if your key shot does after install you didn't get this one um, the icon right here for you to directly import to the key shot you can come to the key shot website or search key shot rhino plugin install and then you will get something like you can have it install the plugin into all those software just click on the rhino and then you will have the file to download and after you use that you are able to see the icon right here in your rhino you may need to restart your rhino if you don't get the rhino plugin into your rhino 6 what you can do is open the key shot and right on the bottom here is a import and then you can import the rhino file that you save for the rendering and open it one thing you want to make sure is you want to make sure it's up orientation is z so that will be the same with your rhino let's go ahead to import this file then this will be the same file as you have the keyshot plugging into the Rhino. Once we have a file ready, there's a few things that we want to consider. First is the material. We need to assign the material in there. Second is the camera. We want to make sure they are in the right position for us to do the rendering. Then we want to set up the environment and additional lighting if it is needed that's starting with the material if you don't have this window right there or this window on the side that's all right they actually all on the bottom on the bottom the first icon that we have is import our uh, rhino file and then we can click on this one that will open the library Inside of the library, you have a set of the material. In the jewelry purpose, we do have the material if you're coming into the metal, and also it, under the metal that you have the precious material. So under there, you have gold and platinum and silver. And then after that, we're finding what kind of a material we like to have. The one over here, if you hover your mouse over there, it's going to give you a preview. This one is 24 karat polish. To assign a material, it's quite easy. We are just going to bring the material and dump it over here by holding the left click. Let me do other material to show you. If I want this platinum uh, to be my head, I'm just going to left click and dump it here by release the mouse so then you can see the material is already assigned with the prong i'm going to assign this material again since i'm assigning the same material it's going to ask me if i I already use this material if I want to link this material and in this case I want to click no because I want to make sure that the prong is high polish but we're gonna give him a little bit roughness on the shank later on come back to the material right here and we see the gemstone I'm going to assign the diamond by dragging this into the diamond on my side stone and i'm going to assign differently than my picture that i showed you earlier that's to the sapphire so now i have the sapphire there to rotate the camera you can you can left click and kind of moving around so that way you can rotate your camera to zoom in and zoom out you can use your mouse 
in the middle of wheel and you can roll it in and roll it out to zoom. If you need to pan, then you're holding the middle mouse and, and moving your mouse and you're able to. So then this is the material. Everything that we have is quite easy. You just need to dump the material into it. It is really important that you separate your material in the Rhino. So that way you don't have to try to separate them individually. However, those three stone is in the same layer. If I decided the one in the middle, it's going to be diamond. What I need to do is right click on this material and I want to unlink this material. So now if I dragging the diamond to dumping on this top and it will ask me if I want to link the material, I'll say no. And then the middle one will be diamond and then the rest of will maintain to keep it as a sapphire. So now if I want to change this one into the ruby on both uh, two side stone, it won't change the one in the middle. Keisha already have a lot of the material that is ready made and you pretty much just bring it to, onto the top of a model and dump it there and that will be assigned the material. However, you may not see the material that you like since we have all kind of a different gemstone. So for example, so what happened if I have this ruby on the side, but it's not exactly the color that I want. So what I do is double click on this ruby. And on the right window, you are going to see the material editor is going to pop up. Uh, the way to easy to change the material is you can take a look on the color. And sometimes the gemstone has different quality like triple A, double A or whatever, uh, different type of a gemstone. You might want to get it red, more in the rich red, for example, like you want something look like that. That might be appear to be more of a garnet, but you can adjust it, simply just adjust the color. And if you do like this color and you're thinking you might gonna use this color later on for all the renderings or make sure all the renderings going to look the same, you're going to see you have the old and also have the new color. All you need to do is drag in those new color into one of the cell there. So that way later on when you come back that you are able to use that color. So that will remember that. Now, once you change the color, you click OK. So now your ruby is actually in different um, uh, richer tone or, or whatever the tone that it's feeling for your design. So this is the easy way to change the gemstone color. The same thing it's going to happen into the gold that we have. If we double click on the gold and we're coming into the key shot into the material and then let's go to the gold. It's under again, it's under the metal, and then you have all different kind of metal. We want to go to the precious, and then we wanted to go to the gold. It only gives us those yellow gold right there. So, what I wanted to do is thinking about maybe I do want to have um, rose gold. And to adding the rose gold, basically it has the copper content into the gold. So it has some sort of a pinkish color in there. We want to double click, double click, and then you will see this metal. And under here, you do have the choice for the copper. And actually, I I would like to change to the copper and see if, the, if that is the color that I want. And if that is not the color that you exactly wanted, we can uh, change the metal type instead of measured and we want to go to color. And it will basically give you a black and white and we can coming over here to pick up what color that will fit into our rose gold better. And you can kind of uh, custom the color that you like. But in my experience, uh, the copper color is actually pretty close. So I'm going to stick with the copper color and we can change that a little bit once we have the lighting going on. For this demonstration, I'm going to have it go back to the yellow go and then so we'll go from there. The next demonstration, I'm going to show you how to adjust the environment and also the lighting to make it really pop. Thank you for watching and I will see you next.